What's going on guys? This is Simon from SG, and in this video, we're gonna go over some of my favorite Chrome extensions to use with WordPress, WooCommerce, and just general productivity. So whether you are a designer, developer, marketer, or just someone who wants to know some cool Chrome extensions, this video is for you. And with that, let's jump into it. So the first one I wanna go over is called Wapalizer, Wapalizer. Basically, whenever I visit a site, I can see the technologies that are used on the site. So if I go to, you know, this site, I can see that it was built with Shopify. If I go to, you know, this site, I can click this and see that it was built with, you know, WordPress, WooCommerce. I also can see, you know, what analytic tools they are using. This is really helpful just for general browsing. You know, you may come across a site that you like and you can easily see what the technology stack was built with it and what you know, maybe where it's hosted hosted at or what analytic tools they're using. So that is called Wapalizer. And that can be found right here. So that's the Chrome extension. Okay, perfect. So the next Chrome extension I wanna go over is called Clear Cache. So Clear Cache could be helpful if you are trying to debug something or you just need to clear your cache. So for example, let's say I add a product to the cart and I'm testing something on this Charlie's Coffee Co. site. So I can click this clear cache button right here. And after doing that, it's going to make my cart empty. So maybe I'm testing and adding the cart and some action happening. Using the clear cache plugin just makes it easier to easily click this button to clear my cache. And a pro tip with this one is go to options and make sure that you have cache, cookies, and local storage. And I also recommend only doing the last hour now you may just want to use an incognito window if this is too confusing for you, but this can be really helpful if I want to click quickly test something on a site and quickly clear the cache and the cookies. Okay, moving on to the next one. So we're going to go to inbox when ready for Gmail. Now this is not specifically for you know WooCommerce or WordPress, but basically this just allows me to click this show inbox so I can easily just hide my email by default and then I can show my inbox when I'm ready. So inbox when ready. And this is really valuable. Now if I click this inbox when ready tab, I can you know, have a frequency, I can enable it to be hidden by default, I can have it auto hide, I can have a lockout schedule, or I can you know, give a time budget that I only can spend an hour per day on my Gmail, etc. So this is a cool little plugin with Gmail if you're using Gmail. Okay. The next one we're gonna go over to go over is called what font. So what font is nice if you know I'm on a site that I like like this. I can quickly click this what font and I can see, okay, here is the font that is used here. And I can know the font, the weight, the size, the height, the color. Um, super helpful if I'm on different sites and I want to, you know, figure out what font is using that catches my eye that may, or maybe that I like. Okay, that is called what font. And the next one we're gonna go over is called Slick Color Picker. So this could be a helpful tool to figure out you know what colors someone is using. So let's go back to this site and let's say I click this color picker and I'm gonna pick you know this color for example. And I can easily see the hex color of this color and it's also gonna say my recent colors. So the reason I have a bunch of recents is I was uh, testing this tutorial before, but um, you know I could easily click this and I can see the color. So this is just helpful just to get the hex color that I like on a specific site. Okay, that is called Slick Color Picker. And the next one is called Momentum. So Momentum is just a new tab, um, a new tab window that I can use. So for example, if I open up a new tab, this is using momentum right here. You know, I can set up a to-do list. I can, you know, cross off a to-do list item. You know, it's really helpful and it just has a nice new tab page that I can use on a day-to-day -day basis. So that is called momentum. Okay, the next one is called Fireshot. So Fireshot can be really helpful. It takes screenshots in your browser. Obviously, in the last couple of years, taking a screenshot on your computer or on your Mac has gotten a lot easier, but I still get value out of Fireshot just by general screenshots. 
and also in situations where I want to capture the whole page. So I can capture, you know, a specific selection, or I also, if I come back here, I can click this um, Fire Shop tab and I can do the entire page. So this could be helpful if your client, you know, wants to print off all, you know, a specific page and mark stuff up. And instead of putting a bunch of JPEGs together, um, it could be easier just to like, capture the entire page and send it to them. So for example, I could capture this entire page. You know, I can also save this as a PDF and boom, we're on our way. So I've had to use this before with working with like a financial firm or investment bank that needed to do like compliance and look at all the text in the site. And it just made it easier just to use Fireshot instead of, you know, trying to convert everything to a PDF. So that is called Fireshot. Okay, the next one I'm gonna go over is called Keywords Everywhere. So Keywords Everywhere can be really helpful if I am just Googling something like WooCommerce subscriptions, for example. I can see, you know, the, the monthly search volume. So I can see this is 12,100. And I also can see, you know, some trend data. So the last like three months or five years, um, et cetera. Then I also could favorite or star the specific keywords that I like and save them to a list. So Keywords Everywhere has a free plan and a paid plan. And if you just use the free plan, I'm sure you're gonna get a lot of value out of it. And it's really helpful because if you're doing like keyword research, you don't wanna like sit in, you know, Google Data Planner or something else. I mean, you can, but just being able to add these keywords when you're already using Google or another search engine um, is really helpful. So that is called Keywords Everywhere. Okay, the next one I wanna go over is called Data Slayer. Now you may not use this too much, but if you're trying to debug Google Tag Manager, you don't wanna use Google Tag Assistant extension, I have found that Data Slayer is really helpful. So basically this only pertains to someone that has Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics on their site and you wanna debug why a tag or an event is not firing. So you can easily you know, open up Data Slayer right here and it will be able to show you know, specific actions that you do. So maybe you make a purchase and you want some event to fire and you're trying to debug why it hasn't happened or filling out a form. Anyways, Data Slayer can be really helpful with debugging Google Tag Manager stuff. Okay, the next one I wanna go over is called Redirect Path. So Red Redirect Path is helpful if you are just launched a new site or you're trying to figure out you know, how the site is redirecting, um, especially for www or non-www domains. So, you know, for example, I could go to, so this is not www, but let's say I just type in, you know, w Charlie's Coffee Co. So I can click this redirect path and I can see that it went from the www version to the non-www version, which is the primary domain that I set. So this all looks good, but you can also see like redirect chains if something is off. So that is called a redirect path and I recommend it. Okay, so the last one I wanna go over is just LastPass. What I use is the password manager. Now, if you don't have a password manager at this point, check out LastPass, maybe one, one password or something else. That's another extension. And then I also would say TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is another extension that I use um, just for YouTube analytics and stuff like that, which is really helpful. And one last tip that I wanna say before I close out this video is that if you want to use your Chrome extensions in incognito window, so for example, if I open up incognito window, I still have access to these Chrome extensions. So I can easily just go to Chrome extensions, manage extensions, and then if I open up a specific extension, I can check this allow in private. And if you guys are curious why it doesn't show like a Chrome browser, Brave browser that I use also allows you to use Chrome extensions on it. So, but this is the same thing for Chrome. So you can just click this and click allow in private. And then you can use it in your incognito window. So I, now I can use this clear cache or I can use, you know, Wappalizer. But you have to go to each individual extension to enable it in a private window. If you got value of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys gave me a thumbs up 
or a like or subscribe or leave a comment. It really helps out with YouTube's algorithm. So give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe, maybe all three. Awesome. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.